Hello friends, today we are going to see what is remote method invocation in Java. So this uh, remote method invocation can be shortly called as the RMA. Actually it provides the API to create a distributed applications in the Java concept. So this RMA actually allows an object to invoke the methods through the remote method only okay uh, that's why uh, here we can easily understand uh, the topic itself they have given clearly remote method invocation so we are going to activate some object through the remote method for example in case if you are sitting and watching a TV if you want to change some particular channel uh, usually you will not uh, walk near to the TV and you will not change the channel instead in case if you are having a remote on your hand you can change the channel which you are expecting to change from the place where you are sitting so like that here we are going to uh, activate or invoke the object from one place to another place with the help of the remote object I hope this concept is clear like a, a TV remote we are going to have one object called a remote object to change or to activate the object so in this RMA concept we are going to have a two types of a programs one is for a client side another one is for a server side so for uh, client and the server we are going to have a two important objects that is stub and skeleton so the stub uh, object is for a client side and the skeleton object is for a server side so this remote ob object is an object actually uh, why we are going to have a remote object in the sense we are going to activate or we are going to invoke an object of another JVM actually the client program will run on uh, one JVM and the server program will run on another uh, JVM but to communicate or to bind this two program we are going to have the remote object I hope this concept is clear next one we are going to see what is stub so already I told you this stub object is uh, for the client side actually it acts as a gateway gateway in the sense uh, uh, what are all the uh, outgoing request or uh, informations uh, it has to gone through this stub object only so everything will be handled uh, by the stub object only especially when it comes for the client site alone so all the outgoing requests has to meet the requirement of this object only then it will pass from one place to another place and uh, it has some task it has some uh, responsibility of doing some task so when you call this uh, client method or when you call this uh, stub object it will do this following task so first one it will initiate the connection between your JVM to another JVM okay so first thing it has to initiate the connection of your JVM that is for the client side JVM and next one it will write and transmit the parameters and to the remote virtual machine so what are all the uh, methods you are going to print or you are going to calculate it will uh, transform all those parameters to the JVM and third step it will wait for the result and fourth one after getting the result it will return the value or in case if you have any errors or exceptions it will show you the errors also and finally the expected results are written uh, or the value will be written to the caller side caller side in the sense client side so next one skeleton so skeleton is an object this object is also acted as a gateway for the server side like uh, how the stub is doing all the work for the client the skeleton also have some responsibility to check for the server side so first thing after getting the incoming request it will do some work okay so first work is it will read the parameters for the remote method so it will read the parameters in the sense what are all the uh, arguments or what are all the uh, values you have defined uh, it will pass to the 
remote method that is to the another JVM and it will invoke the method of an actual remote object to write or to transform the result for the caller side okay so for example if i'm requesting uh, some answers if i'm uh, expecting some answers from the client side okay i'm giving the request to the uh, server side so uh, for uh, server side this skeleton will do all the work when i initiate the request actually this skeleton object will read what are all the parameters i'm expecting and uh, how to activate this actual remote object once if it is completed that is uh, once if it reads the parameter and once if the actual remote object method has been invoked and finally it will return the answer to the caller that is whom has initiated the request so this is the architecture of a rmi so uh, machine A is for the caller and machine B is for the remote object and this machine A is the client and machine B is the server. So for the client side we are having the stub object and for the server side we are having the skeleton. So through this stub and skeleton we are going to connect with the internet and to get the answer. So, in the previous slide, I uh, told you, uh, let me explain what is distributed application in later. Okay. So, now we can see what is distributed application. Uh, before you call uh, some application as a distributed application, it has to follow this following needs. So, first one, the application need to locate the remote object method. Okay. So first thing it has to identify where the remote method has been placed or located and second thing it has to provide the communication with the remote objects only then it can be called as a uh, distributed application and third thing this application has to load the class definitions for the objects okay and uh, last step actually this RMA application uh, have all this following features so it can it can be called as a distributed applications so before you call some application as a distributed application it has to meet this three requirements first thing it has to locate the remote method where it has been placed and second thing it has to communicate with the remote object and third thing it has to load the cl class definitions for the objects and we have six important steps to create the RMI program. So first thing we have to create the remote interface and second thing and we need to provide the implementation of the remote interface and third thing we have to compile the implementation class as well as we need to create the stub and the skeleton objects using the RMI, RMI C tool. So fourth one, start the RMI registry service by the RMI registry tool. And fifth one, create and start the remote application. And the sixth one, create and start the client application. So in, I'll, I think already uh, we have uploaded the uh, RMI program as well as I have given the clear explanation about how to run this RMI program in the uh, notepad as well as using command prompt. I hope this video is uh, very clear as well as it will help you to understand the concept of RMI. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and click the bell icon. Do like, share and comment.